consistent, inconsistent. It is being done in a haphazard manner. One judge will give a man 50 years, no parole, for criminality, for, for criminality involving God. It is the same situation. We are a Shamar, age 36, has been charged for the murder of elderly couple Thelma and David Neymar, age 61 and 68, and the injury of a young woman in Woodstock District, St. Anne. Shamar was from Belle Air Meadows, discovered being in the parish as charged on Friday with murder, illegal possession of firearm and ammunition and wounding with intent. His court date is being finalized. The fatal attack occurred Wednesday, September 15th. The police report that about 5.50 p.m. all three persons were at home when armed men gained entry to the premises and opened gunfire hitting them. They were taken to hospital where Thelma and David were pronounced dead and the young woman admitted in stable condition. Shama was taken into custody on September 18th. On October 1st, he was placed on an identification parade and was pointed out by the witness. He was subsequently charged. Consistent. Inconsistent. It is being done in a haphazard manner. One judge will give a man 50 years, no parole, for criminality, for, for criminality involving gun. It is the same situation where another criminal have done the same thing and is given three and five years. It can work so. I am saying that now, when it comes on to gun crime, it must be consistent. Judges must not have any discretion. People are saying, and I heard it on the radio, they are saying that the Privy Council say this and the Privy Council say that. To help with the Privy Council, the Privy Council is in England. They don't know what is happening here. It is a different situation in England from what is happening here. Judges now must be liberal in the sense that, not conservative, because our judges are too conservative. Judges must be liberal now, whereby they say no. Mm -hmm. 50 years, no power for a gun crime. Any, any offenses involving gun crime. And that is what I want government to do also. But judges can make law. I know you know that when judges sitting on the bench, they are powerful. And they can change law and they can make law right there. There is a law which is an emergency, you know. That is a law, you know. And one judge is Mr. Bertrand Morrison. Change it completely. So they can change that. So gun crime. The maximum you can do is 50 years, no power. Don't give them life sentence. Because when they get life sentence, they do five years and three years with good behavior, they come back out. And, and, and then they come back out with the same behavior. Yeah? Well, your artist Richie Stevens has rejected allegation that he raped a Singapore woman while on tour in Australia in 2019. The allegations was made by a 27-year-old Elaine Lin in a 25-minute video posted. Stephen, whose right name is Richard Stevens, who said he was cleared by Australian police who investigate the matter. Hello everyone, my name is Richard Stevenson, aka Richie Stevens, and I'm here today to address some allegations that you might see going around about me. Initially, I said I wasn't going to say anything, but now I think I owe it to my family, to my friends, and to my fans to come out and set the record straight. Miss Elaine Lim came out on social media and made some allegations against me. Some of what she said is true. But I am here to tell you what is true. One, she was on tour with me in Australia in 2019. Two, she made a formal report to the police against me. Three, she did a rape kit. But what she did not tell you, a thorough investigation was done by the Australian police. I was detained. They took a statement from me, a statement from her, a statement from other people, and there were cameras in the vicinity. While I was detained, I called my attorney, Mr. Christopher Townsend, who advised me on what to do. And at the end of that investigation, they found her allegations were simply baseless. 
You know what is true? I'm really sorry for her to know that she would go that far to try and get some recognition. We're living in a time where people are doing certain things. We see it every day. Some people believe that likes are far more important than the truth. And we're here today to bring the truth out. Check this out. She claimed that I came back to Jamaica and run on to the media and give them fabricated stories. I have not done that even one interview. I have not posted a video about the incident. I didn't do nothing like that. The only thing happened is my attorney, Mr. Christopher Townsend, wrote a letter that I posted on my IG. That's all I did. Now this is in contrast to what she has done. You have to remember this now people. This woman is a professional video editor. And if you take a keen look at her video, you see the sheet behind her. You see she talk in a certain type of way. This is nothing but a stage performance. A whole stage production. No, you don't need to stage the truth. Alright, people. Let's take a look at something what she said. She said, in her country, I would be guilty until proven innocent. Which is not even true. But that tells you how warped her mind is. She also took the time to invite the media to link her personally. Clearly, she had a caboose. Now, ladies and gentlemen, she even trying to make it seem as if she didn't get justice in Australia. Australia is one of the most serious countries in the world when it comes to sex crimes. Now, I am a very serious supporter of bringing sexual predators to justice. But her allegations are simply not true. There are people with serious issues as a result of sex crimes. So when people like her come with all these lies, it does not help the movement. I am Richard Stevens, and that's my piece. Car thieves are running rampant in Portmore, St. Catherine, and homes, malls, and may do parking spot outside of Portmore Tax Office and Brayton Parkway seems to be their preferred hunting grounds. It is a worrying reality that has forced police in the division to employ overt and convert means to clamp down on the seemingly high-tech crooks who reportedly dress to fit the context of their ease. Their technology also seems to override vehicles with sophisticated security system. Head of the division, Superintendent Christopher Phillips, also believed bandits operating in the Portmore Pines area may be part of a vibrant interdivisional car stealing ring and the tax office customers are prime targets. 56 of the 134 vehicles stolen in Portmore this year were from the Brayton Parkway in or around Portmore Pines, he explained. We have an issue with car theft across the division, but more so along that Portmore Pines area, the sovereign village and outside the tax office, Phillips said. There is a parking facility at the front of the tax office because you know people can park on the inside. We are seeing quite a number of cases from there. It doesn't matter the time of day, he said, and the crooks who often drive the stolen cars into police division make the best of heavy business day when the malls and tax office are crowded. There have been a few breakthroughs and arrests, said the superintendent, and sometime when we recover those vehicles, there are no visible signs of forced entry. Last week, however, Tax Administration Jamaica and Portmore downplayed the seriousness of the situation as outlined by the police. We are aware of a few incidents of motor vehicles being stolen in the vicinity of the Portmore Tax Office. However, we cannot confirm that the majority of the motor vehicles stolen comes from in front of the tax office stated TAJ. We are not aware of this being a problem at any of our location. We have, however, been advised of one such incident occurring outside of Spanish Town Tax Office. No such incidents have been reported at our Kingston Revenue Service Center, she explained, adding that the cops maintain a presence outside the Portmore Tax Office during peak hours. Arton added, Tax Administration Jamaica regularly reviews security arrangements for all its locations. Security arrangements have increased at most locations, particularly to assist in the management of crowds and to maintain the COVID 
prevention protocols. It's an act of evilness. So you can't cut off people like from last week, Saturday, you know, bring you back all now. Yeah? A $40,000, we are paying for light bill every month. And JPS say, they're not giving no compensation for the things that we lose. You know how much me to dash this morning? I loads of me to dash this morning. For last week Sunday. Last week Sunday. I see that. They have to build for Turkey. Like God Sunday and they said build Monday. What, what is this? No man. No man. That no fear man. That no fear. That, that don't fear. We are pure light bill. Yes. Oh yeah, tell you say. We will stop making people in thief life. Eh? I food and responsibility. Mm -hmm. And they said that's why they don't fix it. They come fix it on the chance of our bus. They say a thief is like Kazi, yeah? We not a thief light. We not a thief light. A light will reappear. I like me up here. See me have a business over there, so how it all go? Eh? How it all go? You know how much money we lose? JPS said they're not compensated. So what do we do? What do we do? Stand up like this. Stand up like this. We can't stand up like this. We can't stand up like this, brother. We need justice. We need justice, brother. That's what people them do. I am with the people them, brother. I am with the people them, brother. And if the people that say black, you really talk about black, brother. Because we are with the people. Eh? This is the act of evilness. And we don't respond to the police and nobody wants to, brother. No, my God, man. From last week until now, and we lose so much money. We lose so much money. I just say you're not compensated. We be talking to people and we are thief like. At JPS, because they call the police. We don't have a reason for running hide. That we pay a bill.